Thank you for tuning in to Trevor Talks Podcast, where we talk to real people about real topics and real stories. Today's guest is one for all of us to learn from. Whether you're just getting into the workforce or you've been running the race for decades, there is always space to grow. Ken Coleman is America's career coach and the host of the nationally syndicated radio show, The Ken Coleman Show. And he's also the author of his number one national bestseller, The Proximity Principle, which is available everywhere now. And he's also here to share about his new book, From Paycheck to Purpose, which is coming this fall. And he is here to share it with us first. If you are ready for a career shift or anything, like we said earlier, this is the episode for you. Ken, thank you so much for joining us today. Trevor, good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I am just intrigued by your book that's coming out in the fall from paycheck to purpose is something that I'm definitely passionate about just seeing people jumping out of the rat race that they call the American dream and pursuing something a little bit better for themselves. So can we just start off with talking about the message behind that? Yeah, well, you know, the title really encapsulates what the book is about. We want people to stop working just for a paycheck, mm. certainly work uh, is something that we do to be able to make money to live, right? That's the basic basis line for work. And that's sadly where millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of adults um, have viewed work their whole life as just, well, I do it for a paycheck to be able to live. And if there's a little bit left over, we can make some memories, yada, yada, yada. And I want people to see work as a way that they contribute to the world. It is a purposeful contribution. So from paycheck to purpose is I make the income I need and desire, but I also make the impact that I want to make. Is it possible to use your talent, what you do best, to do work you love, that you're passionate about, to produce results that are very missional for you? They connect to your values? The answer is absolutely. So the book, From Paycheck to Purpose, is a walk through the seven stages. Think of it as a climb up your professional mountain to the pinnacle. The dream job is not just about status and dollar signs. It's really about that significant contribution that you make and the significant feeling you have about your work to where you get excited and pumped up on Monday. And when you go home on Friday, it's not in celebration of I get to spend two days trying to reinvigorate myself because it's been a drudgery, but I am resting and recharging so I can get back at it on Monday. That's what the book is about. I love that. And they call you America's career coach. And from the get go, that title can seem kind of intimidating. So I'm curious to know (laughs) the story behind you becoming America's career coach. Um, As we were talking about before we started recording, you just did a surprise spot on the Dave Ramsey show. And you've just been going at it and going at it, but you still have a smile on your face. So what's the story behind you becoming the Ken Coleman you are today from childhood up the significant memories you have that led up to you becoming America's career coach? Well, you know, that could be a really long-winded answer. Nobody wants to hear that. So the short version is, as a kid, I was always very driven and ambitious to figure out what is this thing. And at 16, began to get some real clarity, feeling that it was going to be to serve the public in politics a desire to make people's lives better through policy. So I pursued that direction. And in pursuing that, that urge, it was leading me all along to being a broadcaster for the same purpose, to speak life into people and to coach people to be the best versions of themselves. So along the way, I go from politics into broadcasting is how it happens over time. It's a very long story. It's a journey that I, you know, really went through a season of uncertainty, otherwise known as fear, uh, some imposter syndrome, otherwise known as doubt. So fear and doubt crippled me and held me back for about three years or so after feeling like, hey, 
there's a shift from politics to broadcasting, but the same passion of communicating, um, connecting, influencing, um, and the mission of, you know, transformation. So it was just a weird uh, journey in the sense that I was always going forward on the path, but I thought that I had wasted so much time. And then realizing that I was going this way, but now I'm going to go this way, but the road's still leading to the same place that I wanted to communicate, to connect for the purposes of influencing people to be their best, to live the life that they're supposed to live. And that really came from an appreciation of history, certainly my faith, that there's a reason behind all of this, that none of us are this big giant cosmic accident. And uh, that we all at some point wrestle with the question, why am I here? What should I do with my life? Nobody teaches you that. So that tells me that we are spirits, we are souls, and there's a soul craving to make a difference in the lives of others. That's amazing. And you touch on fear, doubt, imposter syndrome. Those are three things that we talk about a lot here on Trevor Talks. Um, and you said you went through three years of letting fear cripple you down, which I did the exact same thing down to the T. Uh, walked into corporate America, thought I was living the American dream, but it, it just wasn't satisfying for me. So what are some ways that you got over that fear and you overcame the doubts that you were struggling with in your mind? Yeah, so... Uh, We have to get really, really clear if fear is telling us the truth, if doubt is telling us the truth and protecting us, or is fear and doubt holding us back? Mm -hmm. So a little simple process for overcoming fear and doubt that I've learned from my own journey is uh, I always loved this. There was a, I was a child of the eighties and nineties. So there was this old legal show with Andy Griffith entitled Matlock and he was this lawyer, right? And so it was largely a courtroom drama. Um, And so I've always enjoyed legal movies, A Few Good Men with Tom Cruise and that whole legal courtroom thing. And so if you if you got a favorite legal drama, you know, the the analogy here is, is you need to put fear and doubt on the witness stand. So if fear is telling you something, you're going to fail. Don't do this. Or doubt is saying you actually aren't good enough to do this and you're going to create failure as a result of, you know, whatever it is, whatever fear and doubt are telling you. Um, you got to put them on the witness stand, put them up there and go, all right, fear is saying this, that if I go after this career switch and I don't do well, I'm going to starve underneath a bridge, homeless with my family. All right. Is this true? Well, let's look at this. What would have to happen for me to end up in the place that fear is telling me I will end up? And we just break it down. Is fear telling you the truth? Sometimes it is. I mean, if I go right now to uh, just outside the Nashville area, there's beautiful falls all over the place, and I go up to the top of a fall and I tow the edge, and fear tells me if you're not careful, you could slip and fall, break your neck, and die. Is fear telling me the truth there? Absolutely, it is. I, that could happen. So fear is protecting me. My brain is going, hey, this is dangerous. Whoa, slow down, Sparky. But if I am qualified and I've got the talent to do something and I go after it, my fear is going, if you do this, everybody you know and love is going to make fun of you. They're going to disown you. Is that the truth? No, that's not the truth. So I'm having some extreme examples, but you'd be surprised at how many times I hear that on the radio from callers. So we want to put fear and doubt on the witness stand. And we want to figure out, is fear protecting me? Is doubt protecting me? Or is it lying to me? And if, in fact, it is lying to us, we have put fear, the voice of fear and doubt on the witness stand, and we've deconstructed it. So once we deconstruct and find out it's lying to us, what do we do? We focus on the truth. The truth is I do have the talent to do this. The truth is I have the passion. I love this type of work. And the truth is it is missional to my soul. These results that I will create doing this work I love connect to my values. And so now I know I'm on purpose. I'm using what I do best to do work I love to produce results that matter to me. That's purpose. And the, that sentence right there, that purpose sentence, is like a giant neon blinking arrow pointing out into the business world, the marketplace, shows me different jobs, different career paths that all are in that sweet spot where I use what I do best to do work I love 
to produce results that matter. So that's how we overcome fear and doubt. Wow. And that could be applied into so many different ways, whether it's from a mental health standpoint, uh, whether someone's working a nine to five that they hate just to feed their family and such. But I kind of want to touch into that because uh, listening to some of the episodes from your show, um, which is also a podcast as well, um, you take a lot of phone calls. You talk to a lot of people around America and all over the globe that call in. Uh, they're really looking for a career shift. Um, and some people it, it's detrimental to their health that they get out of the career that they're in, but they're struggling with that fear. They're struggling with that anxiety. They're struggling with that tug on them that, Hey, I have to provide for my family. I have to do this. I have to do that. But there's no real blueprint to success that everyone can go by. So when it comes down to it, someone that hates their job, it's terrible for their mental health. It's ruining their home life. What are some simple steps that we could take without overthinking it to get out of that career position? Well, first of all, we got to figure out what the clear path is, right? So, mm -hmm. so this idea of leaving something that I know, even if it's miserable, this is so hard. I mean, listen, people, let's just, just all be honest with ourselves. How many times in your life have you realized that you would rather stay in something that's making you miserable as opposed to doing something that will make you uncomfortable, right? You know, I'm miserable here, but in order for me to leave misery, which I know everything about, and I've managed to kind of maintain, I've managed to kind of deal with it. But if I move over here, which I can see is a better future and everything's better, but it, it's going to require me to be uncomfortable and face things that I don't know. Woo, I'd rather be miserable than face the unknown. Okay, so that's the first thing. Know that that's not a you thing. That's a we thing. That's a human thing. So, okay, I know I'm dealing with that, and that's where fear and doubt are going to rear their ugly head again. So I've got to have a very clear path forward. What I mean by clear path is I see the steps I must take. What I don't see, even with a clear path, is the timing of everything. But I do see the clear path. And so that's why I wrote the seven stages the way that we wrote them, and I clear, created this clear path. I've got to get clear on what I'm moving from to. So if I want to leave this stage one, I can walk you through the seven stages because that's the answer. So I, I, I'm here in this miserable career or just a blah career. It doesn't have to be miserable. don't have to hate it. But I'm blah or I'm miserable. What do I want to do? I got to get clear. I go back to the three indicators that we all have, talent, passion, mission. Talent, hard skills, soft skills, passion, work that I really love to do. I have high emotion and devotion for it. Okay. Finally, mission, results that matter to me. So when I begin to go, here's my purpose statement. All right, I take Ken Coleman's Get Clear Career Assessment, which is coming very soon. And in 20 minutes, I'm going to fill out my professional purpose statement. And it's going to go, I, Trevor, was created to use what I do best, blank, blank, blank. To do work I love, blank, blank, blank. To produce results that matter to me, blank, blank. Okay, boom. I look out in the marketplace. I go, oh. I could be a physical therapist. I could be a nurse. I could be a doctor. I mean, whatever, I'm making this up. And we see all the possibilities. Now I'm clear. But now I do a little bit more research, which I just clarify and verify, which one of those do I want to do most? And let's say I find out I want to be a physical therapist. Now I move into stage two. What do I have to do to get qualified? College. Well, maybe. Sometimes, yes. For physical therapy, yes. But to be a programmer, no, I do not. I need some online training to become a programmer. So I, I ask myself, what do I need to learn? What do I need to do? How much is it going to cost? How long is it going to take? And I got a plan to get qualified. So I'm in stage two. I get qualified. While I'm getting qualified, I'm using Ken Coleman's The Proximity Principle in stage three, which is about getting connected. I'm making connections. I'm hanging around people that are in physical therapy. I'm going to places where physical therapy is happening. I'm observing. I'm watching. I'm hanging out, getting to meet people. Maybe I can work for them one day as soon as I get qualified. That's stage three, get connected. At some point, an opportunity presents itself and I take it and I start. That's stage four, get started. Once I'm in, I'm busting it, crushing it, trying to win the now so I can get to the next, which is stage five, get promoted. I'm going to stay in stage five for a while because now I'm on the ladder, but I'm, I'm moving up, but I'm still in stage five. This rung, this rung, this rung, this rung. At some point, I move from stage five to stage six. I get the dream job. Am I done? No. I've been climbing this whole time going up. I get to the top of the mountain, my professional pinnacle where I am right now in my dream job, but I'm not even close to done. My vision changed. 
I was looking up the whole way. Now I'm looking out. I'm on top of the mountain. I'm looking out. I'm expanding my vision. I'm essentially repeating the seven stages again, right? Get clear. What's the next mountain? What do I need to do to be qualified to climb that mountain? You know, it starts all over. And so the idea here is, is that we are moving from stage six into stage seven, which is give yourself away. Now I'm not working for income. Income is there. I'm not working for notoriety, awards. I'm working for impact only. It's legacy. Those are the seven stages. So you ask me, how do I get out? It's those seven stages. That's beautiful. And I love that you use the word legacy because that's something that we've been talking about a lot in the previous episodes is what legacy are we going to leave behind? And I'm just, I read, I skimmed through the proximity principle. I'm excited to start your next book. You have so many resources available, especially with Ramsey Solutions. You've got the every dollar budget. You got Ramsey Plus now. There's so many things for so many people, but you mentioned a course that you're going to put out or um, a little uh, questionnaire type thing to help people navigate their career path, right? What yeah. is what is something that they can do right now? Like, I want to leave this job. I want to get my wife out of the bad job that she's in. Uh, my kid just got out of college and figured out they don't want to use their degree. Um, no matter what the situation is, is there like a mindset shift or something that we can apply right now to just break that fear, break that anxiety and break out of the corporate rat race? Well, you know, I mean, I hate to keep going back, but I mean, if that's you mm -hmm. right now, you've got to get clear. You got to help oh. your wife get clear. You got to help your kid get clear. And, you know, as we're recording right now, I mean, again, they can go to kencoma.com, uh, the, the assessment's going to be available. This is going to be, uh, if, you, if you've ever taken Strength Finders, where Strength Finders 2.0 gave you your top five strengths, that was it. We're going to give you, we're going to give you your top three talents. You'll see the, the rest of the, how you score on the rest of the universal talents. There's 12 of them. All work skills can basically be grouped into 12 talents. And you can get clear on that. You can figure out, we're going to tell you exactly the type of work you love. And then we're going to show you the mission result that most drives your work. And you're going to get a purpose statement. It's a about a 20-minute assessment, about a 25-page report that's beautiful and specific. I mean, that's a tool that your audience needs to check out. I mean, it's mm -hmm. called the Get Clear Career Assessment. But besides a tool like that, you've got to first decide to do this, to say, hey, do I think there's more? Do I think there's more to this? And even though it might take me time and cost me some more money, What's the alternative? The alternative is to get to the end of your life and look back and regret that you didn't do the thing that your heart was telling you to do versus decide today. It might take me a little bit longer, but I'm not going to lick my wounds and say, oh, I spent all this time at college and all this money on a degree that I'm not going to use. I'm going to worry about what other people say. I mean, look, dude, I was 32, 33 years of age when I told everybody I knew I was not going to go into politics. That's what they all expected. And I was a successful businessman. I was set up to run. And just out of nowhere, I'm going to pursue broadcasting. I don't have a degree in broadcasting. I'm never going to have a degree in broadcasting. I, I mean, you know, it was it was horrifying, terrifying to kind of put that out there. Uh, but you got to decide. You got to decide. Yeah. And when you decide to get clear, and you don't have to take my assessment. The assessment just does the hard work for you. But if you just sit down and go, what are my top talents? What do I do best? What have people always complimented me on? What's come easy for me? Those are the tools by which I'm going to be able to match up to work that really makes me excited. I mean, let's put you on the spot. Give me two or three types of work that you actually look forward to. You're not even doing it yet, but you get excited thinking about it. And then when you're in the middle of it, time seems to disappear. What is it? Social media uh, content creation and podcasting, just like we are now. Yeah. So that's the work you love to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go backwards. I'm doing this out of order on purpose. So what would you say, or what would everybody that knows you, Trevor, tell me if I interviewed them and said, what are Trevor's top two or three talents? What would they say? Probably encouragement and staying consistent. Yeah, but there's more to it. Those are character traits. I like yeah. that. But what else? I'm talking about an actual talent, a hard skill, soft skill. What would you? What would they tell me? 
Ooh, sheesh, I am on the spot. Let Let's me help see. you out. I'm going to help yeah. you out. Let's go. I do Let's this go. for a living. So based on your answer of the type of work you love, I'm going to take a guess as to the as to the talents you have, the way I word them. You ready? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that you have the talent of communication. Yep. All right. And 100%. I need you to respond like very yeah. positively or no, you're kind of off because I'm okay sure. with this. Okay. Communication is one. Yes. I'm also going to say connection. Very different. Yes. Oh, look yes. at his face, folks. Did you see? Did you, <laughs> can they see your face in this? Is this video? Yes. yes. You really, re- now the first one I warmed you up because you started going, well, am I a great speaker? I didn't say that. I said, do you have the uh, ability to communicate? Right? Which I is do. To, yeah. to be clear and to listen. But then when I said connection, you went, oh, I connect with people. People tell you that you That's connect true. with them. Yeah. One more. One more. I'm going to say that you have the talent of imagination. A hundred percent. Wait a uh, second. How is it that I know this? What am I reading your mind? Am I, am I spooky? What's happening? Did you write this in the book? No, (laughs) no, this is the new book. This is in the new book, but this is the assessment I'm talking about. Here's my point. I asked you what work you love. And based on the answers you gave me, I was able to tell you what your top talents were. We did not talk beforehand. We've never talked prior to this. Okay, here's how I knew that. We as human beings have been given talent, which are tools. It is the tools we use to do the work that we love. Do we as human beings, Trevor, like to do things we suck at? No. Well, you're right. (gasps) So I was able to say, wait a second, Trevor loves this work. I'll bet I can figure out what his top talents are. Mm. Now. This is the fun part. Right? We went out of order. Normally, we want to identify talent first because it gives people clues as to the work they love. But you know what you love and you're doing it. So it's this is easier for you. Now, let's talk about mission. All work creates results, true or false? True. Whether they're true. good or bad, that's up to another question. That, that's, that's not what we're talking about. When I work, I create a result. Maybe a crappy result, maybe a good result, but it creates a result. All right. There are six intrinsic motivators behind what we do. Intrinsic motivation means no one has to reward me for doing it. No one has to threaten me to do it. I do it because I want to. As a parent, I tell my kids, go clean the room or you're not going to your friend's house. That's a threat. If you get all A's, I'll give you this much money. That's a reward. Okay. Intrinsic motivation is I do it without anybody suggesting it. I love to do it. Okay. Based on what I've heard from you, okay, I think I know the answer, but what is the result of the work that you love? What's the result that you most want to produce in the world to contribute through the work you just described? Uh, Generosity. I want to be able, like uh, going back to legacy, at the end of the day, like everything I do during the day for work, whatever, is to where one day I can give generously, I can give extravagantly and uh, help them get out of tight financial spots. Okay. So the way that, so the answer, so the answer is influence. Mm. That's your number one mission result of your work. You use what you do best, communication, connection, and imagination. Okay. To teach, advise, I don't care what, what, what we're saying. We create, okay, creating, advising, teaching to influence people. Influence is about changing people. That's your purpose statement right there. That's your professional purpose statement. So that means you could be a podcaster, could be an author, hmm. could be a blogger, could be a writer. You could design websites that deliver that result. It doesn't matter. As long as you are using what you do best, those premium tools to do work that you just forget the result. You just love the work. But then when we add the mission or result to it, it's like, are you kidding me? I feel like I'm stealing money from somebody. So that's, I just wanted to break that down. I know I took over your podcast for a second. No, it's great. I want people to understand the unbelievable simplicity of what I'm teaching. This isn't, this isn't hard to understand. But it actually is crazy when you think about how simple what it is I just walked you through and yet how crazy, scary, and mythical the answer feels for people. Mm. What am I doing with my life? Oh, my gosh. It feels so intimidating. Am I right? 
Yeah, 100%. But what we just did, folks, is I took Trevor and I used him as an example. And Trevor provided all the answers to me. Mm. I didn't do anything other than dig. Wow. Well, welcome to the Ken Coleman show. Just kidding. Yeah. But <laughs> there's one last thing I want to break down. But before we do that, that is yet so simple, yet so effective. You had me thinking like I didn't go into this thinking I was going to get assessed, but now everybody knows my talents and et cetera. So if you're trying to come for my job now, you can because you know what you need to be qualified. <laughs> um, but we have a bit of a crisis on our hands that I know you and the team over at Ramsey Solutions talk about quite a bit. And it's the college debt crisis yeah. uh, for the people that are listening in and the majority of them are thinking about going to college in the future. What would you say to that person that is uncertain about what they want to do in their life, yet they feel like they know what they want to go to school for? So before they invest the money into yep. going to a big fancy school, getting $130,000 in debt, no shame to anybody that had. Um, has done it, but we're trying to save people the stress of all those student loans. What would you tell them before they pull the trigger and go to college like that? Yeah, thanks for asking me this because I'm crazy passionate about this. You have to answer these two questions. Since I know what I want to do, it's got to be based on this. You know the profession you're heading towards. You have to ask the first question is, is this the only way to get there? If you are going into the medical field, you must have the undergrad and then the advanced degree. If you want to be a lawyer, you're going to need the law school degree. These are two examples we all understand. So if it's that and it's like, is it the only way? The answer is yes. Now your decision is made for you. If you get a no, is it the only way? And you get a no, then the next question applies. Is it the best way? Let's go do our research. Is going to a four-year school, the time and money involved there, while it's not the only way, is it the best way? If the answer is a very clear yes, then college is the path. But if it's not the best way, then forget college. Forget what everybody else thinks. Forget what your mom and dad think. I know that freaks some people out. I'm not saying dishonor and disrespect your parents, but I'm saying it's time to put your big boy pants on. Mm. A lot of moms and dads have bought the message that millions of other moms and dads have bought because it's been crammed down our throats that college is the best way to success. That's been crammed down our throats from the federal government and higher education institutions for a very long time. And by the okay. way, it's increasingly wrong. Man, this episode is jam-packed with just so many resources. Um, we're going to link in the description the assessment for everyone to go check out. Go check out the Proximity Principle in stores everywhere and be looking for Ken's new book in stores this fall. Ken, where can we find you on social media? Yeah, at Ken Coleman on Instagram, Ken Coleman Show on TikTok. We just had a viral video on TikTok. Ooh. I can't believe it. Uh, also, uh, the Ken Coleman Show. Uh, it's at Ken Coleman Show on TikTok, Ken Coleman Show on Facebook, and uh, of course, at Ken Coleman on Instagram. All of those links, LinkedIn, everything, Twitter, all of it is at KenColeman.com. Amazing. And we're going to link all that in the description below. Be sure to go pre order from Paycheck to Purpose, also yeah. in the description below. Ken, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hopefully, we'll have you back soon. Yeah, Trevor, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you to New Release Today for making this episode happen. Uh, we're super thrilled to be a part of their podcast network. And we will talk to you guys next week.